Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and this short video is going to deal with the standard normal transformation. So the standard normal transformation. Transformation. Okay. Uh, and let's just recap, uh, we define the standard normal transformation through a particular uh, equation or through a formula and that formula says that the z uh, score associated with particular observation x is equal to the difference between that observation and the population mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so let's try to get an understanding of this particular formula and what this particular formula does to a particular distribution that has mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Okay, so let's say we've conducted an experiment. Okay, let's say we've conducted an experiment and this experiment is trying to ascertain uh, or understand uh, with respect to students uh, and how much students typically spend over the weekend. And let's just assume that we know from previous studies that the amount of money that students spend over the weekend is normally distributed. Okay, so let's say this particular axis here represents money spent, and I'm just going to put some negative values in here as well, minus 20, minus 30. Okay, so let's say we perform an experiment, I ask a number of students how much they typically spend over the weekend, and let's say our responses, and we're going to represent our responses through a histogram. And let's say that the vast majority of students said that they spent between between 50 and 60 euros, um, with a little less student number, less students saying that they spent between 60 and 70 euros, and less again between 70 and 80. And we had a number of students that said that they spent between uh, 40 and 50, and a number of students that said that they spent between 30 and 40 euros. Okay. So what we have here is we have the distribution associated with money spent by students. So money spent by students okay, over last weekend, let's say, for argument's sake. And we've constructed this ourselves and we've orchestrated this uh, so that the histogram uh, is relatively bell-shaped. So what we can actually see from this particular histogram is that we can actually put a bell-shaped curve over the top of it. Okay. Now what we know about bell-shaped curves is that the center point of the bell-shaped curve, yeah, the the point of symmetry down the center, uh, represents the mean of our experiment. Yeah. So in this particular instance here, for this particular histogram for money spent by students, the mean of this particular of this particular population is going to be around fifty-five euros. Okay. So let's have a look at this particular transform and let's see what the effect of this particular transform is on this distribution. Okay? So the first thing we're going to consider is we're going to consider the effect of x minus mu. Okay? In other words, any observation yeah, from this particular population minus the population mean. Okay, and for simplicity purposes, we're just going to consider a number of observations from this population. And we consider the observation maybe 30. So let's bring that. We'll consider 40, 50, 60, 70, and let's consider 80 as observations from this particular population. Okay, so let's consider x, the effect of x minus mu. So x is going to take on the values. So x is going to take on the values uh, from the set 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. For this particular example, yeah, and what we need to calculate is we want to calculate the effect, okay, the effect of taking the mean, the population mean, away from each observation. So we want to calculate the effect of x minus mu. Now, in this particular instance here, mu is equal to 55. Okay, so let's take our first x value, which is 30. When we take 55 away from 30, okay, so we have 30 minus 55 is going to give us a value of minus 25. Okay? In other words, through this particular transformation at this stage, the value 30 is taken to the value minus 25. So 30 is taken down to the value minus 25, which is in around here somewhere. Okay. What happens to 40? Well, 40 minus 55 goes to minus 15. So the value 40 through this transformation is taken to minus 15. Okay. What about 50? So the value 50 minus 55 is taken to 
minus 5. So 50 is taken to minus 5. What happens to 60? Well, 60 minus 55 goes to positive 5. So 60 is taken to positive 5. Uh, what happens to 70? Well, 70 minus 55 gives us, well, 70 minus 55 gives us 15. So 70 is taken to 15. And finally, what happens to 80? Well, 80 under the transformation, 80 minus the population mean minus 55 goes to 25. So 80 is taken to 25 here. So what we can actually see is that we could have passed in any value between 30 and 80 and we can see that what happens when we take the population mean away from the values is it has the effect of shifting the distribution down. Okay? So let's see where the distribution has gone to. So the tallest bar 50 to 60, okay, well 50 is taken to minus 5 and 60 is taken to 5. So the effect of the transformation is to move the tallest bar down okay, around 50 sorry, down around minus 5 to 5. What about this bar here, 40 to 50? Well, 40 is taken to minus 15 and 50 is taken to minus 5. So the effect of that is to shift that bar down around here. And then 30 to 40, well, the 30 is taken to minus 25 and the 40 is taken to minus 15. So the effect is to shift that bar down around here. And when we consider the 60 to 70 unit, that's taken to here. And when we consider the 70 to 80 interval, that's taken to around here. Okay. So what hopefully we can actually see now is that the standard normal transformation, that the numerator in the transformation has the effect of shifting the curve. Okay. It shifts the curve down over zero. Okay. And this doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what the distribution is. Well, at this stage, we're going to assume that the distribution is normally distributed. Yeah, okay. Uh, but it doesn't matter where the distribution of the population is positioned along this axis. Yeah, okay. The effect is going to be the same. Its center point for the distribution is going to shift down over zero. And all of the values less than the center point is going to shift down to be values less than zero. And all the values greater than are going to shift down to be values greater than zero. Okay. So I hope you understand that. That's the effect of x minus the population mean. Okay, so that's brilliant. Okay. So what else can we do? Okay, so what we're just considering here is the position of our distribution along this particular axis here. Okay, uh, but every distribution has two parameters that define it. Okay, uh, the parameters that define a distribution, the parameters, yeah, that define a distribution. Okay a distribution okay, are mu, the population mean, okay, mean, and sigma, the population standard deviation, population standard deviation. Okay. Okay. So we know the effect now of taking the population mean away from each observation. It shifts the curve down over zero. So what is the effect of dividing by the standard deviation? Well, as I'm saying here is that every population has two parameters. They have the mean and they have the standard deviation. So what is the standard deviation? So let's consider a single population or a single population that's centered on a specific value. Okay, let's say the value is centered on 55. Okay, so the population for money spent in this situation was centered on 55, and I had a particular dispersion associated with it, and that dispersion is defined by the standard deviation. And the standard deviation is going to give us an idea of how fat or how skinny the curve is. Yeah, okay, the closer the observations are on average to the mean. Okay, it means that the standard deviation is going to be small, which gives us a distribution that's relatively skinny. Okay, the further away observations are on average, yeah, from the mean, it uh, tells us that the standard deviation of the distribution is going to be very, very wide. Okay, so here's an example where we've got two distributions, they've got the same population mean, but they have different standard deviations. Let's say that's standard deviation one. And let's say this one here is standard deviation two. Okay. Now, we know that this particular standard deviation is a particular effect that's associated with our with our distribution. Okay. Now, if we want to ever eliminate something, eliminate an effect uh, from a process. Okay. One way to eliminate an effect from a process is to divide out the effect. Okay. 
So when we take our transformed variable x minus mu, okay, and when we when we divide that by the standard deviation, we get what's known as the standardized variable z of x, yeah, okay. And the effect of dividing by the standard deviation associated with a particular population is that that population, all them populations, no matter what they are, are all going to be transformed into a population that's centered on zero, okay, centered on zero, okay, and that has a particular well defined centered on zero, so that's a mean, okay, mean of zero, and it has a particularly well-defined standard deviation where this standard deviation is going to be equal to 1. So no matter what the population is, okay, when we divide by its associated standard deviation, the new variable that we get, z of x, okay, will always have a standard deviation of 1 because we're eliminating the effect of the standard deviation uh, associated with the particular distribution. Okay guys, uh, I hope that, uh, that helped you uh, to understand the standard normal transformation. And maybe just to recap, the standard normal transformation has two major components associated with it. It has a numerator and a denominator. The effect of the numerator on a particular population distribution is to shift the population down over zero. And the effect of the denominator, which is the division by the population standard deviation, is that no matter what the standard deviation of the original population, when we divide by that standard deviation, we're eliminating the effect of the standard deviation, or we're standardizing it. And what happens is the curve then will bend into a curve that has a standard deviation equal to one unit, okay? And we call this curve, this curve here that has a mean of zero, Okay, and a standard deviation of one to be the standard normal, the standard normal curve, okay, or the standard normal distribution, okay, distribution. Okay, guys, uh, I hope that helped you with this uh, particular concept. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Thanks for your time. Okay, bye bye.